Hey everybody, welcome to GDTV Just In. I am your host, Dominique, and we are just been moving around in, in different parts of the main library. So as you can see in the background, it's a little, di little different. We have these red kettles, um, and this is actually part of the, um, the Elgin Corps Salvation Army. Um, and this is actually our third year of having it here at the library, and it's called uh, Design a Kettle Challenge. And um, many different local businesses, including our own, we've actually took one um, red kettle and we decorated it. Um, so we are, it's, again, this is a challenge, so we're competing for it. So it's on the second floor here at the main library. So we love our visitors to come on up here and place a vote um, and so that we can see who wins. And this is gonna be, it's starting now, um, all the way up until December 15th is when you have to cast a vote. So, all right. So we're gonna roast to shore. This is going to be a great episode. And I want to thank all of my amazing guests for being here and get ready to feed you on a big feast of good picks. So we're gonna start with Kid Space. Hey, Mickey, how are you? I'm good, Dominique, thanks for oh, having me. I'm glad you're here. So what kind of good picks you got coming from Kid Space? Well, I was gobbling up a few good books. Ooh. And I thought I'd bring a few of my favorites to show you. <laughs> All right. But, you know, in the meantime, you know, we were busy in kids' space making some crafts, and I realized that I made a mistake on my hat. Can you notice? I see. So it is upside down. Um, which reminded me of my first favorite brand new book that just came out this month. It's called Max Learns the Importance of Practice. So this is Max, and he's a raccoon artist. You might have heard of him. Um, but he's not as good as he wants to be. But he doesn't think he has to practice. He thinks that artists. They never practice, they're just naturally good. But it turns out, he does have to practice. But instead of practicing, he does art heist and he steals them. Mm. I won't reveal the big ending, but let's just say there's lots of drama. But the important lesson is you gotta keep practicing. So hopefully I'll be able to turn my turkey around before Thanksgiving. The next one, so then I was getting a little hungry after all those art projects. And I thought, what better book than The Tater Tales, which is about a bro two brother spuds, potato spuds, they're mutant <laughs> potato spuds, and they're in a competition for the world's greatest. And they go up in an epic contest of all kinds of things. So we've got snot and rot. And boy, I don't know, this is a big one. I will leave it to you to read to find out who wins. Let's just say it's one of our brand new graphic novel books. And finally, because we were learning all about foods and crafts, what better time to learn about cultures? Because we can learn lots of things from books. And so I came across this really fantastic author. She's brand new. Her name is Tracy Sorrell. And she is a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. And she wrote a book, this new picture book that just came out, all about a year in the life of folks in the Cherokee Nation. And it's called We Are Grateful. And the Cherokee name for the word grateful, and I hope with practice, just like Max, I'm gonna try to pronounce it. It is O Ja Li He Liga. So that is the name. And you can practice too if you check out this amazing picture book with all sorts of new words and new traditions to explore. Oh, nice, nice, Mickey. So explain to our viewers out there exactly how can they get the books? It's a really good question, isn't it? <laughs> well, you can come on down to the library. First, of course, make sure to vote for your favorite. I won't tell you which one, but pick your favorite. <laughs> then come on and visit us in Kids Space, and you can find these books on our new bookshelf. You're going to find all mm -hmm. sorts of new books that have just come out. And you can check them out with your library card. We have e-versions of this, so you can also check them out at home on Hoopla and all in cloud libraries. So there's lots of different ways that you can do that. Awesome, awesome. So when you place a hold on it, mm -hmm. if you stay closer to our branches, that's also a great way to be able to get your hands on these books, it right? It sure is. Awesome. So the library is all around you. Of course. So awesome, awesome. You can well, go to lots of places. Thank you, Nikki, for stuffing us with all of those wonderful top tips. <laughs> 
All right, so up next is Margaret. Yes. Hey, Margaret, Hi. so what good things you got going? I've got some really good picks for you today, Yay. Dominique. I think right. you'll like these. Okay. The first one is called Secluded Cabin Sleep Six, and this is by the author Lisa Unger. It just came out November 8th, and I know you like this. It's a chilling thriller. Yes. Scary. <laughs> chilling <laughs> thriller. <laughs> Uh, three couples rent a secluded luxury cabin that they found online, and they're planning a restful weekend. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Like a wonderful thing to be <laughs> restful right now. Right. However, things immediately do not go as they had planned. A deadly storm is brewing. The rental host seems a little too present, and a personal chef shares a dark history of the house. Mm. And on top of this, the friends have their own complicated past and they start to wonder if it, who they can actually trust in this secluded cabin. Lots of secrets to uncover here. The holds are piling up, but we have lots more copies on order. So if you want to read that yeah. one, Dominique, yes. I I'm know you will. I'm putting that on hold. I am putting that on hold. I know you want that one. We're going <laughs> to yes. it's available at all our branches. So. Awesome, awesome. The next book really piqued my interest. It's called The Cloister, and it's by Katie Hayes. It just came out at the beginning of the month, November 1st. And what surprised me about this, it's already on the New York Times bestseller list last week, and I thought, I've not heard of this uh, Katie Hayes before. And when I looked into it, the plot is so compelling. I can see why it just became an instant bestseller. Anne Stilwell arrives in New York to spend her summer working at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. She is assigned to work in an area called the Cloisters, which is a Gothic museum and garden renowned for its medieval art collection. And there she meets a group of eccentric researchers who are studying the history of divination and fortune telling. Right? Yeah, interesting, huh? I want to know if that museum really exists. The cloister, <laughs> yes, that does exist. Oh. Yeah. And Anne discovers she happens across a 15th century deck of tarot cards and the line between this reality and magical theory starts to blur. So, I mean, really interesting. You could see why. I like that one. Yeah. I like yeah, that one. Oh my gosh, one. I like that one. This is an instant bestseller. It's also a Read with Jenna pick, Barnes and Noble book club pick as well. So lots of good buzz around that. Get yourself on hold right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta hurry up and do it. I know, I'm excited <laughs> to read that one, an yes. author I haven't read before. And finally, it is Native American Heritage Month. So I wanted to find a really highlight a newer Native American author that's receiving a great amount of claim. The book Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. It's a debut collection. This is short stories. So I like, I like to read short stories sometimes. You can kind of dip in and out and you have a full story in just a short amount of time. So I really enjoy that. This is getting starred reviews everywhere. It's getting shortlisted for all sorts of prizes. Uh, Morgan Tatley's a uh, citizen of the Penobscot Indian Nation in Maine, where he grew up. And so all of these uh, moving short stories are set in Maine, in the, in the Native American nation. But in an interview I saw with him, with the author, he says that it's really, he's really just setting it there, but putting these people in, in these kind of trying situations. So really it's about how the individual handles these situations. It really becomes about the human condition, you know, as a whole. So if you want a good short story collection, I would recommend Night of the Living Res for oh, sure. That one sounds really yeah. good. So Margaret, if we can let our viewers know one more time, how can they get their hands on these titles? Well, the great thing is you can go right online to our website and request them. You can pick them up on hold inside our branches. We have a drive of windows. 
So wherever you want to put them up, go online or call the reference desk and we'll put them on hold for you. And don't forget Bookmobile. The Bookmobile is there as well. That's right. Yes. You yes. can come to the Bookmobile. And I also want to point out that since it is Native American Heritage Month, our librarians have created a list. This is just one wonderful new voice in Native American fiction today. Uh, they have librarians here have created a wonderful list with more books and you can go to our Goodreads website. You can find that at rgailborden.info and just discover wonderful books that the librarians here recommend. Oh, that's amazing, Margaret. Well, thank you so very much for yeah. those amazing top picks and sharing that extra information that I wasn't really aware of, but now that we know, we all know. Um, and that was some great top picks for us to feast on. Yeah, oh, cool. enjoy. Nice, nice. Thank Stuff you. yourself thank full. You. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Keep full on coming. Fiction. We're here all night. We're here all night. <laughs> all right, so on to movies. Tracy, what you got for us? All right. All right. It's always tough to choose. There's always so much good stuff coming in. But here are this month's top three. We're going to begin with Top Gun Maverick. You can already hear Danger Zone in your head, can't you? <laughs> hear it? So what can I say? I mean, it's Top Gun, it's Maverick, even Iceman returns mm. to Top Gun, Val Kilmer. It's just fun. It's 1986 in 2022. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, after 30 years, Maverick is back. Still a loose cannon at the top Naval Academy, but now he must confront ghosts of his past when he trains and leads Top Gun's elite grads, among them the son of Maverick's best friend, Lieutenant Goose Bradshaw Goose? Goose? on a mission that demands the ultimate sacrifice from those chosen to fly it. Dun, dun, dun. Just the trailer is exciting. It hits all the buttons, all the right feels, right out of the gate. It's high octane fun, as the kids <laughs> like to say. Uh, it just uses the same tried and true formula as the original, which, by the way, the library also has on DVD if you want to have a marathon Thanksgiving movie weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can do Top Gun. And I got to admit, it is currently sitting on my credenza at home. I have not had an opportunity to watch it yet. That said, to me, this is like asking for seconds at Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. You already know what you're getting. You just want more. Yeah. And that's what you get with Top Gun Maverick. So if you're familiar with my Milk Dud rating out of four Milk Duds, I'm going to give this one a TBD, which stands for to be dudded, because I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> but I think it's probably going to earn at least a three, just because it's nostalgic and great fun. Nice. nice. Top Gun. Yes. Danger Zone. Yes. OK. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to something completely different. Perhaps you've heard of Power of the Dog. Uh, this is a Benedict Cumberbatch, mm -hmm. Kirsten Dunst, uh, Jesse Plemons, and Cody Smith McPhee. The year is 1925, and the Burbank brothers are wealthy ranchers in Montana. Elder brother, Phil Burbank, is brutally beguiling inspiring fear and awe in everyone around him. When his younger brother brings home a new wife and her teenage son, Phil slowly torments them until the unexpected occurs. The Power of the Dog is based on a book by Thomas Savage from back in 1967. And side note, that was actually the very first title that I reviewed on GBTV okay. when we just started out, right as this movie was being released on Netflix. Now it's in the library's collection, and it is worth seeing. Power of the Dog won all kinds of awards, including an Oscar for Best Director. It's dark drama, it's atmospheric, and just super well acted. It is not a happy movie, but it is a good movie. Three milk duds. Mm. <laughs> Confirming. Gotcha. Three milk duds. Awesome. Okay. So in that same vein, if you're into that kind of thing for Thanksgiving weekend or whenever, there's Don't Worry Darling. This is a, a newer one. This is directed by Olivia Wilde and stars Florence Pugh, Harry Styles, and Chris Pine. It is another psycho thriller type movie. 
and um, it's essentially sort of a retelling of 1975's Stepford Wives, but with a very modern spin. So even if you've seen that movie, this one is worth checking out. Very interesting. So it's the 1950s, and Alice and Jack live in a utopian experimental community called Victory, a company town that houses the men who work on a top secret project. While the husbands toil away, the wives get to enjoy the beauty, luxury, and debauchery of their seemingly perfect paradise. However, when cracks in the idyllic life begin to appear, Alice can't help but start questioning things. So this movie generally got mixed reviews, but I really enjoyed it. Another solid performance by an up-and-coming A-list actor, Florence Pugh. She's fantastic. She's fantastic in this. Well done, very watchable, and like Power of the Dog, not for the kids. So save this one for later. Uh, three milk duds. Nice. Very, very good stuff. Oh, that one sounds good. Now, I want to give special mention, though, to another new one in our collection, which is Nope by Jordan Peele, which is also super interesting. Check that one out. Um, a really cool new take on alien movie genre. Mm -hmm. So I won't say too much more because it's easily ruined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just check it out. Good stuff. Um, but then with that, I want to throw it back to you all and ask, what, if any, are your favorite Thanksgiving movies to watch? Oh, that's a hard oh. one. Now, they don't have to be Thanksgiving related per se. They could just be something that you traditionally watch on Thanksgiving or around that time, if that's something that you do. I have mine. Do you want to hear mine? Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. These are all in the catalog, by the way. Check yes. them out. Um, Home for the Holidays, Holly Hunter and Bancroft. Yes, classic. Robert Downey Jr., lots of fun. Um, planes, trains, and automobiles. Classic, that's classic, 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 yes. Right? <laughs> and then finally, Pieces of April, which is a nice little sleeper starring, it's on the tip of my brain, Tom Cruise's ex. Nicole Kidman? What's her name? Nicole Kidman? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, the, the other, other, other one. Mimi Rogers? No, no, no. The Katie other Holmes. One. <laughs> Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. <laughs> oh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Margaret for the win. Katie Holmes. I don't <laughs> usually love, love Katie Holmes stuff, but it's just a really charming movie, um, Thanksgiving related. Uh, it's just, well, I'll just leave it at that. We have it, really good, check it out. Okay, awesome. those are mine. Well, I like, I watch one that people may not necessarily automatically think of it as a Thanksgiving movie because it's more traditionally Christmassy, but I love the show, the classic. Miracle on 34th Street, yeah. yes. and what people may not remember is it is starts with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, mm -hmm. and a fun fact is this movie uh, was made in 1946, and they actually filmed it then uh, live. They filmed at the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, so they only had like one take to get the shots that they really wanted, so oh, it was wow. really a Same. challenge for them. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. But it Turned out great. Yeah, I enjoy it. it. That's, yeah. a, that's also a classic Fun film. Classic. Sure I have you like the original or the remake? I like the one from the, the 40s, 47 is when it was released. And yeah. it's just the, that that is really Santa Claus to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he played Agreed. that very well. Yes. Yeah. He really did. I and he was in the, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade that year when they filmed it. He was Santa. Mm. Was there. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, another fun fact. Yeah. Yes, they filmed it. I there. never knew that. Mm -hmm. Have another one. Another yeah. classic. Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Oh, of course. Right, Mickey? Yes. I mean, Is that one of my faves. That's I mean, classic. How can you not love no, it? No, no. <laughs> just, just you hear the music and da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I just love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I have one, it's called Soul Food, and that is a very classic 90 film starring like Vivica Fox, Nia Long, um, Vanessa Williams. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on of this cast, and that, that film was just phenomenal and really, really spoke with the tradition of um, African Americans and how we celebrate our Thanksgiving and it's about family. And it, I mean, it was, it's a drama, but it it's really tells a tale where you always have that one um, family member who who is everything 
that is like the glue of the family. And I really, really love that film. And then um, another different film going in a different direction is Instant Family. And I love anything with Mark Wahlberg in it. <laughs> So this Marky one, Mark. yeah, Marky <laughs> Mark, <laughs> and this was such a funny film. Um, and then there's one that's in Hoopla, and this one's called Son-in-Law. <laughs> and this is a classic 90s film. <laughs> Anyone who classic, is, class, yeah, classic, it's absolutely cl it's hilarious. It's starring, you really it's starring MTV VJ, <laughs> <laughs> Holly <Paulie> Shore. <laughs> And actually, and I hope I'm pronouncing her last name because she's still currently um, is acting. Carly Gugino, am I saying it right? No, and she plays in the Netflix um, series The Haunting mm -hmm. um, on Hill House or yeah. something. Oh, yes. yeah. She plays in so many different like films. Like a mother. Yeah. I was today years yeah. old when I learned that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, she's a phenomenal actress, though, and I think she's in San Andreas with um, mm -hmm. uh, The Rock. Yep. I just call him The Rock. Yeah. Yep. She could hold her own with Polly Shore. She, I know. <laughs> she was funny. If you need something <laughs> funny and you want to stream it when you're out visiting families or friends and celebrating, and you can put this on through Hoopla on a, on a smart screen. But this film is so funny, and it just gets you in such a good mood. And he goes through so much crazy stuff <laughs> to get the approval of this uh, future-in-law. But I absolutely love that one. That one gets it me is, really, really fun. happy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was racking my brain because you all have such a pick. I was trying to think of what. And you know what? I was like, maybe it's so much a movie. But I do binge watch all of the Friends Thanksgiving yes. episodes. I mean, they're classic. You know, we had them here. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you can't beat them. I mean, yeah, exactly. Who doesn't, who doesn't have a Friendsgiving, you know, once or twice <laughs> in their life? Right, right you are. Yes, Friendsgiving. exactly. Awesome. I feel awesome. like we're having a Friendsgiving right now. Yes, That's beautiful, yeah. man. I love, it. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. All right, well, these are all great top picks. I can barely believe it. Cranberry? Cranberry. Berry. Yes. <laughs> okay. But, um, <laughs> Let's keep our giblets. Our giblets together. Uh, I try, guys. I, I really try. All right. Um, so I want to thank our amazing guests. I want to thank our viewers out there. And we are so thankful for everyone. I, I'm, I'm here all night, you guys. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely trying. Um, but amazing um, event coming up um, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is our mini holiday book sale. You definitely don't want to miss it. Um, Saturday um, only, we have a BOGO going on. So um, great prices, very low um, to get some great gift ideas going on there from movies to all types of genres of books and even foreign books. So we've got so much of a huge collection of CDs. I mean, you name it. Um, so come on and visit us here at the main library Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you don't want to miss that opportunity to save some great money on some really, really wonderful finds, okay? All right, awesome. So I want to thank you guys once again. Hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving, including my guests here. And once again, I'm your host, Dominique, and this is GBTV Just In. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs>